Is the Wayfinder Echoes update for you? Is it actually worth your time and your $25 while it's in early access? Well, after playing the game for about 14 hours post the Echoes update, I have some thoughts. And I'm not going to tell you a yes, absolutely, you should 100% dump $25 into this and buy it immediately, but I'm also not going to tell you to refrain from doing so. Now, also, as I stated in my previous video, I was not an avid player of Wayfinder pre-Echoes, so there are probably going to be some gaps in this video, and if you were an avid player of Wayfinder and had a couple hundred hours in the game or anything like that, then please feel free to fill in those gaps in the comment section down below. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is the load times. So pre the Echoes update, load times, because there was a server and there was multiple thousands of players trying to get into the game, it took quite a while to actually load into areas, especially if there was cinematics on the ends of those areas that you were trying to load into. I can confidently tell you that the load times are half if not one third what they used to be. Now, yes, there are still some cinematics that are at the end of areas that you're trying to load into. And of course, when trying to load into those, you are gonna notice that it does take a little bit more time. When it comes to entering missions, either with a team or solo, you do things way faster. The next thing I wanna talk about is the leveling. I wanna say the leveling in Echoes is absolutely unreal. So as I stated just a little while ago, I played Echoes for about 14 hours. In that time, I have gone from having no characters leveled up or anything like that to having a level eight Windgrave. I have a level 12 Kairos and a level 22 Grendel. Prior to the Echoes update, I only played Wingrave and I got him to level 19. Now, yes, I did wander around quite a lot. I did get lost. I didn't follow main quests all the time, but I was fighting pretty much everything that I could possibly find. And it took me about 35 hours to reach level 19. So in my personal experience, the leveling is 10 times faster than it used to be. Now, when it comes to tower keys, it seems like you are actually getting tower keys way faster now. I will say that I noticed I was getting tower keys somewhat at a decent rate prior to the Echoes update, but now just running around, having fun, completing quests, I've now almost completed floor one and I, I didn't even realize that I was almost at the end of it. And I remember prior to the Echoes update, I was, I mean, by this point, I might have been on like this part right here. The next thing up is the mounts. The mounts are absolutely freaking awesome. Not only are they absolute speedsters, but they look really freaking cool too. There are some really awesome designs. And of course I don't have all of them, but I have three different ones. So we have this cool like dragon horse thing. Looks pretty awesome. Then we also have this like alien deer gazelle thing. I don't know, but it also looks pretty freaking cool. Absolutely the coolest one is the gore. Or hound. I mean, just look at this dude. He kind of looks like an ember main mixed with a freaking balrog. And also it didn't really seem like it was anything that was like super time gated where I had to play the game for like 25 hours before I was able to get my mount or I had to complete some crazy specific quest or anything like that. There is a quest where you are supposed to talk to the stable master, but I was able to get the gore hound by literally going into town and talking to somebody and spending a coin that I got that was translated from a previous coin I had prior to echoes. And I think I got that right around the eight hour mark of me playing, but the moment to moment gameplay didn't feel slow when it came to traversing because there's also a million fast travels all over the place. One of the next really big things is the loot. So how often do you actually get loot? How does it feel? All that kind of stuff. You get loot really, really quickly. So when you're just eliminating a bunch of enemies, when you're opening up chests, when you're doing the trickster stuff, you get loot like crazy. And plus I'm also getting stuff that's two, three, four levels higher than I currently am, which is really nice. And the armor itself is really nice and they do apply some pretty nice status effects. Another thing I want to talk about is actual like stats, your max health and all that kind of stuff. These stats for me personally, coming from prior echoes, I did not have any 
these kind of stats, right? I dumped everything that I possibly could into having max health and tons of resilience and physical power or, or physical defense and all that kind of stuff. I do not ever remember having anywhere close to almost 2,500 HP. I think the most I had on Wingrave was like maybe 1,600. And my power rating did not come anywhere close 2,130 like it is right now. Those aren't just numbers that you kind of discard. You actually feel strong. And that is one of my complaints from prior Echoes. I felt weak as a level 19 Wingrave having the highest possible Echoes that I could get on. Not anymore. Which then brings me into my next point of damage. You do an insane amount of damage. When I was running around as a level 12 Kairos, just doing little dungeons here and there, I popped my ultimate on the boss and there was one like random enemy next to him and it dropped the hand and did 5,560 damage to both the boss and then another proc to the little gremlin dude or whatever that was next to him. I never saw a number anywhere close to that prior to Echoes. Even as early as level eight, level nine, not having a level 20 plus character and then bringing all your crazy OP Echoes to that character. No, no, just out the gate, you feel strong. You're doing damage and you actually feel like you're carrying your own weight, maybe even a little bit more. Now I will give you an example of that here in just a second, but something I do want to talk about is the grind, because this is something I addressed in my previous video. How much of the grind are they removing in order to actually get other Wayfinders? Uh, dude, the grind is freaking non-existent, okay? Literally just doing a couple story missions, a couple side quests and whatnot, I got Wingrave, I got Silo, I got I got Nis, I got Kairos, I got Senja, and then not even that far into it, I got Grendel. And prior to Echoes, I had maybe three characters unlocked by the 40 hour mark. Let's see how high we can get. That's a 980, 1724. I'm gonna take a potion here really quickly. 1891. But yeah, the damage just feels so much better now. The, the ability to melt bosses is just freaking wild. And you can do this solo or you can do this with a team. Now, of course, I'll give you an example of his ultimate. He goes into this crazy blood rage like that. It's just wild. I mean, look at this guy. Look at this freaking guy. Now, when it comes to feeling accomplished for the time that you're putting into the game, in my opinion, I feel accomplished when I'm actually completing boss fights or dungeons or just wandering around in the open world. I'm getting things and it feels like not only the XP that I'm getting, but also the loot that I'm getting. I, I feel rewarded for the time that I'm putting into the game. Before I get into my constructive criticism, I want to show you one really cool thing that either I am just completely oblivious to and never noticed, or this is completely brand new, but that is talents. And these are massive freaking skill trees for each character. Each of them is a little bit different, kind of unique per Wayfinder, not entirely. Basically, you have these massive skill trees where these golden nodes here are really, really big items that you want to work towards, really big abilities that either help you, help your kit, help your teammates, and it's freaking awesome. There's quite a few of them. And now for my constructive criticism of the Echoes update. So basically, the game, feels incredible. It really does. And everything that I've outlined so far is 100% true. Everything feels really good about the game. But of course, like every game, there are still bugs. There are still issues that you're going to run into. This game is absolutely still in early access. Even with everything good that I listed about it, it is still in early access. You're not gonna get this game for $25 on June 11th and then be like, oh my God, this is a finished product and it's amazing in every single way and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You're not even gonna get that if you spend $70 for a AAA game. Definitely not nowadays. But when it comes to bugs themselves, you are gonna run into a little bit of T-posing here and there. You are gonna run into some stutters, some lags, some hitching. There's gonna be some times where climbing is really hard. You're not gonna be able to climb or like 
grab onto ledges. That does happen, unfortunately, quite a bit. Also, if you're elevated up on like a rocky path or something like that, and you need to jump down and there's an enemy attacking you, there is a high likelihood that you're gonna get stuck on that ledge and then potentially die. It's already happened to me. So there are quite a few kinks and rough patches that do still need to be buffed out. I mean, as of now, I am playing the soft rollout of Wayfinder Echoes. This is not the actual early access version, technically, I guess. But even when that comes out, it's still gonna be a little rough around the edges. And even when the game fully releases later on this year, it's probably still gonna be a little rough around the edges. And then, of course, like invisible barriers or invisible walls, being able to literally just walk through thin air sometimes. Uh, there was one situation where I was playing last night, and one of my friends was riding the zipline even though they weren't riding the zip line anymore. Their character was literally just sitting there, just just doing the animation, and her legs were literally just like, just through the rocks beneath her. Y you're definitely gonna run into that kind of stuff. There are also quite a couple situations where uh, depending on if you're the host or not, you may run into not being able to move and then either swapping between a character or using a different fast travel or trying to spam a bunch of buttons on your keyboard or your controller or something like that may get you out of that, but there are quite a few situations where you are literally just not gonna be able to move backwards or forwards or something like that. You're gonna have to literally try and like spam crouch or something in order to get out of that. But it has improved in almost every single area. So now, based off of everything that I've said, what do you think? Personally, I think the game is absolutely worth $24.99. Prior to Echoes, I would not say this game is worth $25 or even $40. If, by the time later this year, it has worked out quite a few of those kinks and issues that I mentioned, then I would say it's worth $40. So now if you played the game prior to Echoes, or if you're just getting into it with this soft rollout of the Echoes update, or if you're seeing this sometime in the future and the early access is already out or even the full launch is out, let me know what you think about Wayfinder. Now I wanna say thank you very much for watching this video. And if you wanna see any more of my Wayfinder content, click right here. Are, are, you, gonna, are you gonna click it? I mean, you have to click it, right? Why are you looking at me like that? I don't, I don't know what you want me to do. I, I'm stuck here. You got to click it. Go on.